she came with a bonus. <laughs> I was going to start singing to you. <laughs> and then I felt shy because you didn't notice my hat. <laughs> I am yeah. sorry. I was going to sing you Mariah Carey, which would have been a mistake. <laughs> no, um, you absolutely have to now. No, no, I'm going to sing. I won't, I won't do a podcast unless you sing. <laughs> It's going to happen one day, but it'll be a surprise. I wanted to just come on one day and just start singing well, to you. <laughs> now you have to just do it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying another word. <laughs> oh, is she shy? She's so shy. <laughs> but it has to be impromptu, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. One day I will just start singing to you. You won't be, you won't even be ready. It might be a Disney song. Disney might be better than Christmas. So okay, just be, I'm taking off the Christmas hat because it's a weird angle. <laughs> <laughs> but I just had to get it. It looked great. It looked great. I love it. It's it's for my promos for our giveaways. I have been. I apologize. I didn't know we were going that hard when it came to promos. <laughs> I, I should have known better. I mean, at this point, I'm just hook, line, and sinker <laughs> into Christmas. <laughs> I'm just going with it. It's It's been fun, though. It's yeah. been fun to, like, lean into, I don't know, if it, it, it's made it feel like a more tangible community somehow doing a giveaway. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. No, I love it. And I, I love um, like how excited friends are. And then friends I didn't even realize would be so excited. Like Devana came in and then she was like, I'm back, bitches. She's in it. She's ready. Um, I love it. I love that we've had, I love that you had this idea to do this giveaway because you're such a giving person and you just, <laughs> your heart is so full of Christmas spirit. And so here we are doing a giveaway and it's been really fun. It's been so fun. I just feel like the podcast has given me a lot. So I just was like, I want to do something nice for our listeners. And, you know, like, I don't know, even though like I'm, I'll call myself openly like a povo writer, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm in a position where I have everything I need, you know? So sometimes it's nice to shift some of the little extra money that I would usually spend on myself and shift it to someone else this time, you know? That's beautiful. I freaking love that. And that is why you are the glorious Christmas queen you are because you are a gift giving gal. Um, Speaking of you know. gifts, before I forget, I'm not good at taking compliments. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, hello. I was still talking, but it's okay. Oh, no, you made me shy again. Um, <laughs> This. Oh, how cute. Okay. The cuteness is, it's a RuPaul picture book. Now I'm showing it for a reason because I wanted this to be one of our giveaways, one of our days. But I thought, because I'm always trying to think of um, different ways to do our giveaways, Yeah. that this can be like the time we gave away Court's book. So the first listener to hear this podcast on the, like, whatever day that is, day nine of the giveaway or whatever, when we drop this, they'll win a copy of this. I'll send it to them. What okay, so think? what does the listener need to do to let you know? They just need a slide, slide, slide into one of our DMs, both of them. You our mean DMs. sachet, sachet <laughs> into the DMs. Oh, you got a lot of brownie points with me for that one, my friend. <laughs> Have you been watching? No, but I just figured that seems like a thing that RuPaul would sashay. I'm pretty sure I've heard RuPaul say sashay at least a dozen times. Yes, that is correct. So sashay your fine asses into our DMs to win a copy of this just gorgeous, heartfelt picture book. And it's That's it's perfect. just so uplifting and... Mama Roo is such an icon. You know how I adore Mama Roo, which is why I thought this is a perfect giveaway item. So, one awesome. of is going to get a copy. 
That's so good. Did you get that at the the show that you went to? I didn't. I actually randomly okay. saw someone post about it last week. And as soon as I oh. saw it, I was like, I need a copy. I didn't know it yes. existed. Yes. So. Very cool. Yeah. Um, well, welcome guests to the show. Uh, I'm Angela Montoya. <laughs> and um, I'm author of Sinner's Isle, which debuts next year. So this is our final episode our final show of 2022 what a year it's been melanie schubert melanie i it obviously it would have never happened without you this was your baby to begin with thank you jessica para for bringing it to you yes but like melanie you really are when i say you are glorious (laughs) i mean it you are sunshine you are a dark witch on top of the sunshine you are (laughs) You yeah, are Wednesday, I Adam. Cry. <laughs> let me let me say nice things to you, Melanie. Let me say nice things. You are Wednesday, Adams. And what was her friend's name? The friend. I cannot her. stop calling her friend. You are a- Luna Lovegood in my head because <laughs> she totally gives off Luna Love. You are a mix <laughs> of Wednesday, Adams, and Luna Lovegood. I actually got a chill that you said that because this week, I kid you not, on multiple occasions, I kept, I'm sure you do this. Do you ever have this like witty one-liners pop into your head? (laughs) And I kept just thinking, my soul is like a mixture of Wednesday Adams and like Luna Lovegood or something. Like it really, those two personalities really do coexist in my soul. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes it's the red and the pinky purple or no not red I'm sorry blue apparently I don't know colors uh, <laughs> blue. I don't know why I said red but it's the mix it's it's the light and the dark and the sass and the cheese and the fun that is you Melanie Schubert and um and I maybe I'm feeling a little mushy because this is our last episode of the year before we you know launch into new episodes I know three but but thank it's you Melanie for bringing this to life thank you like there's no way I could have done it like this in any way shape or form without you like I think if I had have even considered going ahead with it myself I honestly think it would have been a couple episodes and then I probably would have been like you know an hour is a really long time to talk by myself and interview someone myself and to be honest doing it with you brings the joy in my heart <laughs> like since we're being cheesy <laughs> but like it's fun to do it together is what I mean. you can laugh at me <laughs> you made me emotional now everything is parmesan okay yeah but it is it's so fun and we're I mean our listeners luckily can't see our dms or maybe they should but we really are so in sync in so many ways and like even with the giveaway we're like oh let's do this tomorrow and let's do this about like we've just been so in sync about this and so that's what this the fun of this has been is just like finding someone that's like-minded and and pushes me to be better and helps me be better and so love you melanie exactly the same i love you and like the number of times that like because I think it is rare the number of times like you've surprised me and just been like I didn't expect like I go into stuff not expecting much from people you know like not meaning to sound negative I just don't want to expect anything but like I feel like at every turn when I was just kind of like you'd be like, hey, I've got this idea or hey, I've done this post for you. And I was just like, before I even asked, you've always just like got it. And it's the same in the conversations, which is why it's so fun to do it together because I feel like one of us has always got the other. And and above all, you just always are looking for a way to make people shine. And like, I feel that shit. Like that, (laughs) that is such a beautiful thing in a person. Like every word you say is to elevate people and to to like show showcase their best and and that's what I love about you the most you're just a very giving soul and (laughs) thanks I don't know now we're in this space (laughs) you just hug the screen and cry from this (laughs) yeah thank you I think it is a sentimental time of year that's the thing like yeah I think 
it's your damn Christmas lights, you know? <laughs> damn Christmas lights. But I think also weirdly, I don't know about you, but you know, we celebrated having the podcast like for a year, several months ago, but I feel like it's the end of the year now that I'm feeling that like the, we did this, like yeah. there's all these episodes, there's like a little beautiful community we've started to grow that I genuinely love. That's the real reason maybe I was inspired to do the giveaway. Cause I fucking love our community that started to grow yeah. with the podcast and yeah it's easy to want to like do something nice for the community you love, you know? So thank you listeners for making us like want to do this, making us, because yeah, I think we're both wired that way. Like, yes, you want to do stuff for yourself and like it should move your soul to do it. But I think like we're both in this industry to share our stories and to like hope that it, I don't know, like makes someone else's walk through this, writing journey a little bit easier you know and and just in life in general as our conversations tend to lead (laughs) yes I love that I love it so much um I forgot what the heck what I what we were gonna say (laughs) but I think we have oh the the Spotify um wrap up the year in wrap up Yes. For me, I have been flying high on that ever since you posted it because mm-hmm. it really was like the physical proof of all the good we've been putting in and all the work we've been putting in. We've been seeing kind mm-hmm. of the fruit of our labor in being on so many people's like top 10, yeah. top five, to- like first in their um, podcast listening um like plays and um that to me that video was amazing and and then all like the random little comments we'll get in our dms um they really you guys have no idea how much it means to melanie and i yeah even if it's just one line of like oh that was a great episode or or anything it means the world to us and um, we've had some really beautiful dms lately yeah. And they really like just spoke to everything that we were hoping the podcast would be. Mm. And um, so I've just been flying high on this emotional <laughs> journey of like, we've been doing something really special. And, um, you know, it, I think sometimes it's hard because when you are so introverted and naturally anxious, mm-hmm. it's so hard to put yourself out and like scary yeah. to start a Zoom call with someone you've never met you I know? can't believe we both did like looking back <laughs> like this introvert and miss anxious got on a zoom call together for 45 minutes I, I and we haven't stopped I don't know how, <laughs> how we did it but we literally started I was right here in this room of mine I've been exiled again but I was <laughs> in this room and that's how it started was us just like shooting the shit, yeah. just a, a bunch of uh, yawn, yawn spin, spinners. <laughs> no? Yawn. Yawn. No. I like you're saying yawn, like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> us yawn spinners. Ya- yawn. <laughs> yawn. No, sorry. I just ruined it all with my Australian accent. Okay. But, I was but here it, for it. Thank you. But it's amazing. And then to think of how, like, bringing on guests, you know, luckily we had, like, Jessica Parra and Courtney Kay as our, like, first guests, and then friends from Pitch Wars, and, and we've just been growing ever since, and it's really amazing how far we've come That's in our so journey. True. That's so true. Jessica Parra and Courtney Kay were the gateway drug because we were like, our friends are so cool. Maybe other cool people will come on. Yeah. <laughs> and so now we did it. We got them on. <laughs> yeah, it made us plucky, but like it kind of escalated from just asking our friends on to like, let's ask on this literary agent. <laughs> like, yeah. But I love that for us. Like it's and I think that's the thing, like those little steps that you take every day, especially for people wired like us, when you look back and I like to make a point of looking back because otherwise I keep like talking about burnout 
if you don't pause to look back how far you've come, you're constantly rushing to go further without a specific Mm. goal in mind, you know, and like looking back and being like, oh shit, like look how far we've come, look at what we're doing. Like it's very brave for our type of personalities to do it because uh, in in one way it comes naturally. We are both drawn, I think, to, I think we're both uh, entertainers at heart. I love to make people laugh. I love to tell people a story. And like, I know you've shared that as well, that like, if you've got someone to laugh, it just hits that spot. Like I did it, you know, like it's, it's satisfying and you like brought joy to that person. So, but yeah, (laughs) actually putting that on a platform (laughs) was a journey. (laughs) But we're here and we sure are. (laughs) <laughs> where I was going with that it was you went there you got there it was perfect you did it I mean um, I feel like you're born to be on screen and you're born entertainer but yeah like it's always noteworthy that you know sometimes it's the more introverted anxious types and we're we're like we're putting in the effort <laughs> we're doing yeah. the scary thing <laughs> We really are. And what I love is we don't have to leave our houses to do it, which is just perfect. You know, it's just right. Hell yes. And when we're done with our block, we go and we do our little introverted things and we hide away again. Yeah, this (laughs) is it. That's, you know what, what I, it's beautiful because we're, (laughs) we're pushing ourselves, but not too much. It's so true. (laughs) But I do think for me, and I hope for you as well, that it is giving me confidence for like real life things a little bit, you know, like maybe one day I'll go to that event or like this thing or whatever. Like slowly we, I saw you having the FOMO from that event the other day, that cafe catch up with Power and Court. I was like, oh, I think you're going to be going to one next year. Maybe one. I am. You are. Melanie. I bought a ticket for um it's a, it's called Steamy Lit Con. Yes. I think it's, yeah, like all the all the gang is is um you know their authors that are presenting or whatever there. Um I'm not, but I don't care like I'm going. I bought a ticket just to be a a fan and I'm going to get I'm going to get so many signatures. You're going to have the best time though. I think yeah, I, I hope. I think so because obviously, like Jessica's gonna be there, Courtney's gonna be there, Nikki Payne, I think, uh, Regina <laughs> Black is gonna be like. I think Susan Lee is gonna be there. So um, I'm not to brag. I apologize. I shouldn't have brought this up. No, but I'm, I'm going. To brag. I will get signatures for you. Oh, <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Where are you gonna stay when you go? You have? Did you book um, a hotel? I, oh, I need to, but it's at a hotel and it's at a nice hotel. So I need to probably book before, <laughs> before yeah. it's gone. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to go probably just by myself. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, or, or take the kids and let them hang out at the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> lobby or something. <laughs> yes, that sounds perfect. And then you've got your private space to recharge away from the events, which yes. the, I think you will love it. Yes, thank you. I'm excited. So I'm I'm pushing myself on you those. Are. Yeah. You are. And that sounds perfect. It sounds like the perfect time to push yourself with all those beautiful souls who you've met through the podcast. And and then I think in person it'll just be perfect, you know, like because you already know how they what what their soul is shaped like or something, you know, and and they already know you're an introvert. So they'll They'll understand when you're like, when I disappear. Hour, now I'm going to go hide in my hotel room. And I think That's we just need to normalize saying it out loud. I hey, think guys, so. I've filled my social well. <laughs> I've <laughs> depleted it. It is gone. Yeah. <laughs> I am now taking leave to my chambers to recharge. <laughs> I may or may not emerge tomorrow, perhaps next day. <laughs> Actually, can you just like put that in a quote and just like, I'll just put it on like a little. <laughs> I'll print it on a shirt for you. I'll put it in our merch store. <laughs> yes, please. And then you just open your sweater and you're like, guys, 
Show oh, yes. Twitter. That's so cool. Dilf. <laughs> Dilf. Yeah. That's the best. Carlisle is a Dilf. Carlisle is a Dilf. For those that aren't are that aren't <laughs> watching. Um I I got a shirt from one of our listeners, Kelly. Um, because I, I beta read for her and she sent me a shirt of Carlisle and it says Dilf on top. And I wear this everywhere I go. I wear it to Target. I wear it to Walmart. I wear it it's glorious, I must say. Has anyone commented on it in real life? Just a lot of strange looks. Just it's all I've gotten so far. But I think if I wear this to like Barnes and Noble, I think I'll get a hit. You know? You should, surely. I would cackle so like I would not be able to help myself if I saw that in public. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I'm surprised. Uh, Oh, what was I gonna? I was gonna because you mentioned the shape of souls, the our friends soul shape. And I was going to segue into speaking of souls, I read recently a beautiful, wonderful book about a knight. <laughs> and it, it, it's Melanie Schubert's most recent <laughs> art. I was like, who is this book? Who is this book that you read? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I got her. Um, I read I read Melanie Schubert's most recent book that she has written and it is so beautiful and um I just Melanie you're just you keep getting better and better you are like fine wine well well, I'm gonna turn the compliment right back and just be like right back at you because I am reading currently the most glorious book in existence oh okay (laughs) I just want to share this thought with you when we were talking to Isabella that I I disagree that it's that rough like yes it's a it's definitely like oh my book okay yeah yeah. what are we talking about (laughs) no your book and you were saying that it was like uh like super rough compared to Sinner's Isle after Pitch Wars obviously I haven't read Sinner's now like after a million edits I'm like she'll be polished to perfection but I think it's very clear you've grown as a writer because I would say this is super clean for like what second draft yeah yeah thank you yeah (sighs) the little things that I'm picking up are so minor and I think will be easy for you I mean we never know what like your editor they might want a different direction of stuff but like ultimately you know how to tell a story and that is abundantly clear and I think like it's it's just beautiful like I'm like talking with my hands on the bench you can't see it I'm like this is me but my hands are resting on the bench I've leaned forward into it and yes so I have been kept away from the vampiric embrace for too long because I've been doing these damn giveaways but oh yeah they are keeping us busy but I love it how are you feeling about everything coming towards the end of the year going into your debut year yeah well to be honest after our interview with Isabel that you guys our listeners will listen to after our our ramblings are done um I feel good I feel like what she had to say was such a reminder of kind of you know, like we focus so much on our brains are focused so much on like the bad or, Mm. or doing things to kind of protect us from things that might hurt us or focusing on, Oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm, you know, I see how other people are doing things. They're doing amazing. I'm not doing that. And, um, I've been so focused on like, Oh, maybe I should, you know, maybe I'm not, I don't know. Maybe I'm trying too hard on TikTok or whatever. Um, But like what she pretty much for me was a reminder of was to to bring it back into the beauty of storytelling and to remember why we want to do this. And that's to get our stories out there Mm -hmm. and to have people read our words and um, which, oh, 
my brain my brain just started going again she started she started um spiraling. you're patting her like good girl you remembered that thought <laughs> oh no bad girl she was gonna spiral she was gonna spiral oh, bad girl yeah, bad girl because I was about to say like oh no people are gonna read my book but no 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 people are gonna read it and it's gonna be great um yeah. obviously not all great but but it's going to reach the right listeners. That's something she said too, or, or read it. It's helpful to always think about like, if you just go through like the mall, no, my use of mall, it's not a word here. I felt cool. It's using not. It. No. <laughs> if you just go down to the mall. <laughs> wait, wait, but do you guys have malls? Yeah. We just call them shopping centers. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Mall is strictly like American. I've never heard an Australian use. Oh, I'm just going to go down to the mall. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So when, yeah. Okay. Go to the mall. Back to what you're saying. When you say you had an encounter with every person there, what percentage of them do you think you would like, gel with, want to speak to again? Oh, God. Like, so So that's a rock. That's, that's a low number. <laughs> uh, when you release a book, that's where your book's going. Down yeah. to the book. And I find it helpful to remember that kind of thinking, doing just like mentally preparing myself for the future because, and like even in the past, I mean, I didn't get many bad reviews on the little indie book because it was quite insular, but like it didn't go that far. But I still, it hurts. Like when you get a, I think the worst one I got was meh, boring. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that shit hurt <laughs> but I found it helpful to reflect on that because not every Karen and Kim is gonna like vibe you as a person in general and to be honest you wouldn't want them to like a lot of times those people who rub you the wrong way you're like mm-hmm, you can just stay over there in the other shop so, like, it's yeah. natural that people like that are going to read your book. It's going to rub them the wrong way because their soul is shaped differently, speaking of shaped souls. And they're going to write a bitchy review because they're like, whatever rubbed them the wrong way, that would rub them the wrong way in person just because you're way cooler than them and they could never even hope to be half as cool as the Angela Montoya. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's helpful for you thinking about, like, that exposure and being seen, but... Yeah, it's like those aren't your people and that there are going to be people who are going to come to a page of your book and they will gasp and they will write down that quote and they will pin it on their wall and those are your people, you know. So don't worry about the Karens because it wasn't for them. Mm. Let them write their salty ass review because it it shouldn't hurt you in here because it's a Karen. (laughs) everybody from now on if anybody gives me a bad review just a karen absolutely yeah. if you give me a bad review listen to me now you're a karen yeah. you're an absolute karen okay i like that yeah it's true yeah. screw yeah. them screw them they didn't understand your artistic vision yeah and yeah I like it. <clears throat> well i feel like we've been going to writer church all episode we have yeah we really have it's been a therapeutic episode how do you feel going into the new year melanie i feel a mixture of things i feel excited having beyond love like that i'm getting ready to query i feel scared because i had soul swapped and i felt like soul swapped was like no agent should surely put it down and I did get interest from agents with soul swapped which I'm taking as a win because it never happened that way where I had these big agents wanting to see more wanting to read more so I know I've done something right there I think I for the oh we're running out of time again I have my days you know like it's a choosing to do this full time means that sometimes I unconsciously Put a lot of pressure on myself to make something happen quickly if that makes mm. sense so for me a lot of the stuff I'm focusing on the moment is just like my self-care and 
making sure my day-to-day life feels rich regardless of what happens with writing because I think to go into the trenches next year and like every time you bear your soul every time you put your guts into writing this thing and like and trying to just reframe that as the win in itself and I do feel close you know like I do feel close to finding an agent but it's hard it's it's a long it's a long journey as you know as you well know that (laughs) feeling of like the imposter syndrome comes you know I have my up days I have my down days I think pitch wars made it hard pitch wars made it hard because they it's like you're so close yeah but it's it's not necessarily relative in the industry, if that makes sense. Like that wasn't a marker of, well, now pitch was, and now you get an agent, but that's not what my brain said. You know what I mean? You remember yeah. that weight and you're just like, but I'm, I feel as always like the days when I'm not having that imposter syndrome and I'm not let like letting that, that's just natural. Yeah. It's part of this. It's part of this writing journey. I think it wouldn't be natural to, not feel those things sometimes yeah but it's like I said the other day with Nikki I just try to remind myself that every day I get to do this full time is a win you know and and the podcast has really kept me sane mm-hmm. through the last couple of years querying and <laughs> like the wild <laughs> state of the world it'd be nice if 2023 was a bit quieter but great. I think, yeah, it's that old comparison is the thief of joy. As long as I just focus on what I'm doing and ground myself, I'm happy and hopeful and grateful, you know? So yeah. it's a mixture of all of that. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful and perfect. And, and I think we all can relate to that. It's, there's so much to look forward to. And then there's so much we still want to do. And yeah. growth that needs to be made but what I really love that you said was kind of like finding joy and happiness beyond yeah. our little bubble of publishing and like living life mm-hmm. I think sometimes I forget to live life because I just I feel like I gotta write I gotta get this book done I gotta do this and that but I forget to actually live and be out in the world even though I hate people but like to go do things more. And, um, and so for me next year, I want to try and like get outside of my bubble just a little bit, just go and do things like go to concerts. You know, it doesn't have to like just things beyond publishing that are fun and, you know, get your head out of just this small bubble we've created and remember that there's a big world out there to enjoy. Exactly. And that refills your creative well, doing those things and remembering that. And it kind of, it gives you a, it gives you, I think, more richness doing it that way. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and I think that sometimes you forget how awesome what we're doing is when you're just in that. That's the thing I've noticed that like, even if my little bubble feels perfect and like I've made my little happy nest or whatever, but unless you get out of it, sometimes you don't appreciate it for what it is. So mm. I, I, um, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And I think it's hard after COVID as well. We naturally feel like we should stay indoors. Yeah. Like that's definitely a hard one, but yeah, I agree. Um, before we run out of time, we yes. should read the bio. Read our final bio of 2022. I actually cannot, like, I know, I'm just a broken record, but I'm just like, did we just talk for 40 minutes? Somehow, Melanie, we freaking did. (laughs) I don't know how. Do you want to do it? Do you want me to do it? You do it. You are the queen. (laughs) I'm going to fuck up now for sure. (laughs) Okay. Isabel Sterling is a master certified coach, foster mom, and host of the Author Burnout Cure podcast. An alumna of Purchase College and Syracuse? Syracuse? Syracuse. Thank you. Syracuse University. Isabel spent several years working in higher education and LGBTQ nonprofits. When she's not writing or coaching, Isabel can be found crocheting projects she'll never finish, completing crosswords with her spouse and trying not to destroy her garden. <laughs> she lives with her family in central New York, where the winters are frigid, the summers are too hot, and the autumn is perfect. 
Isabel is the author of These Witches Don't Burn, This Coven Won't Break, and The Coldest Touch. Which I saw those books around years ago, and I just yeah. remember thinking those covers look incredible. And I remember wanting to, you know, like it was in one of those stages where a bunch of books came out and so you're like, which one do I get? Which one do I get? And then it kind of did get lost in my brain amongst all the things. But like mm -hmm. at some point I noticed her posts about burnout and I did not connect the two together straight away. Right. I didn't connect that author of those beautiful books was also this person posting about burnout until like a couple weeks ago when I was just like um should we get this person on and you were like um I've been eyeing those books off for months as well yes. well yeah. and not only did we find the perfect person to end the year with but now I'm also adding her books to my pile because yeah. they literally look and sound amazing I know I'm so glad that they've been brought back onto my radar because yeah my brain is very like I can't I there's so many books I haven't yeah. read most of the books on the shelf you know like it's just not possible so like sometimes it slips through the cracks and yeah they sound just like what we need to read and yeah I can't and this episode is just what we needed to hear I think you know yeah plus uh this whatever part of this process you're at whether you're just starting out, whether you're querying, whether you're on submission, whether you're about to debut, it's really is a long haul journey. And there really are a lot of complicated emotions, days of imposter syndrome, I think at every point. I don't think that changes at any point in this journey. And having the tools, like she said, to navigate and prevent burnout is just so important. And I just, I love that these conversations are happening. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need it. We need it yeah. so much, especially after just like COVID and life that has just been hitting us <laughs> this last few years. Wow. Um, we need these tools. And so I can't wait for our listeners to listen in to all that Isabel has to say. And just wanted to say real fast that I'm thankful to Melanie and our listeners for an amazing year. And I hope everybody just has safe holiday and a happy new year and love you guys all. Hello. Hello Isabel. Welcome to the show. We're so glad that you would join us and um melanie has been cyber stalking you I have. <laughs> she's been super excited about this episode so thanks for joining us yeah happy to be here yes i have been stalking your post and i feel like especially coming up to this time of year a mm. lot of what you're posting was just hitting extra different notes <laughs> you know yeah yeah i think we all need it especially like even just like a reset going into 2023, thinking about how to not get to the point of burnout, which, you know, uh -huh. we're going to get into talking with you about in a little bit. Um, but I think it's so important, especially like for me, next year is my debut year. Yay. Always pause to celebrate a debut year. Yes. 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 Um, but I'm feeling the burnout <laughs> ready. <laughs> <laughs> yep. waiting for me <laughs> yeah well you've been going non-stop since pitch wars really like and that's the thing like they're you like really have to force breaks in because they mm -hmm. don't naturally get given to you and I think like especially in this industry where a lot is kind of run on love and dreams <laughs> That's exactly, it. That's exactly it. Well, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, did you always want to be a writer? Was this always in the cards for you? Yeah, so that's a really interesting question. Um, so maybe just, hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Bill Sterling, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I actually, I don't know. I loved reading, but I grew up in a really small town and it never, I also grew up like in like the 90s and early 2000s. Like it didn't occur to me that like, authors were like humans <laughs> were like actual people so it wasn't really a thing for me until 
I stumbled upon Nano in 2012 when I was in grad school and I wrote a book and I was like, this is the most fun thing ever. And I was terrible at it um, as you are when you begin. And then I just kept going and going. And once I had finished that first book and started to like learn about revision and like, I love revision. So once I got to that stage, I was like, oh, I'm doing this forever. This is the best. Yeah, so that's kind of where it's I'm been a decade now, actually, officially a decade that I've been writing. Wow. I well, congratulations. That. I mean, and I'm looking behind you. You've got books. I you do. have been working. We see books behind you with your name on it. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your novels and, you know, what they're about, what inspired you to write them? Just give it all to yeah. us. Right? Yeah. So I'll give you sort of the the quick version because there are three. So These Witches Don't Burn uh, is the first book that came out. It was the fourth novel that I had written. So it took me four novels to get an agent. And then it's like a whole thing. My first agent like switched to a different role in the industry. So then I had to query again. Oh my God. Um, and I queried like a middle grade that I had written, but somebody who had actually um, offered on these witches don't burn. And then I had gone with the first agent. She actually offered again and was like, even though this has been on sub, I want to send it back out, um, which a lot of times doesn't happen. So that was kind of nice. So that ended up selling in 2017 um, and then came out in 2019. And then this coven won't break. Uh, as a sequel to that. So it's it's queer witches in modern day Salem. There's witch hunters out to get them. And it's just fun. And there's mystery and lots of drama as there has to be and a little bit of romance. Um, and I think we'll talk when we start talking about burnout. We'll talk about book two because book two is a doozy. Um, and this was I sort of wrote these two before I had um any of the the tools I have now about like managing burnout. So that's where I sort of went from like writing is the best thing ever to now it's my job. And now I'm so worried about screwing up this magical chance that it became kind of miserable to write. Mm -hmm. Just not what we want. That's not how we become authors um, to start to hate writing. That's like not the point. Um, And then the coldest touch is my queer vampire YA Um, has Elise, who is a death oracle, which she doesn't know about at the first the beginning. All she knows is when she touches people, she sees them die, and it's horrible. And then she meets a girl who she doesn't see die, who turns out to be our vampire Claire, who's been sent to recruit her. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm I down. <laughs> oh, there's so much, there's so many moments when you're talking, I was like, make a mental note to come back to that make a mental note to come back to that and in the end I just let go of all my tabs and what stands out to me though is you saying that you didn't have the tools that you had for the other books Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean (laughs) you develop the tools later on and it's something very relatable and I think me and Angela, we we kind of do the questions as like a guideline for when we don't have chatty guests. But if you feel inspired to share that, just go in the moment. Don't don't feel like we have to. Yeah. yeah. Questions to you. <laughs> but yeah, like, tell us a bit about what that looked like for you. Yeah. So, I mean, I was always well. Also, a lot of this happened sort of before I became a foster parent, before I was married. So like life has changed a lot over the last decade too, in terms of how I've been able to write. Like I remember the magical days when I could write like 90,000 words in a month. And I was like, woo, that happened one time, <laughs> one time. I was very young, <laughs> I was like 24, um, but that doesn't happen anymore. Um, but so with these witches don't burn, I was so so like so worried about screwing things up like I really wanted to impress my editor so every time I turned in a book I was like hopefully she'll come back and be like it's perfect let's go straight to line edits or straight to copy edits and that never happened until you know until the appropriate time like when, when it was scheduled um And I remember being kind of a jerk to my spouse because I would be so stressed about deadlines and be like, you don't understand. I have to do this work. I can't take any time off. And it was not the best. (laughs) Like even thinking about it now, I just can feel my whole body get like really tense. Um, And then when I was writing the sequel, I was in a day job that uh, very short version. um, I ran a graduate student housing complex that was being built and then like most of the complex 
ended up not getting built on time. So I was all of a sudden trying to write that book and I was working like 60, 70 hour weeks with just people screaming at me all day. So it was not the best. Um, and even just before that, cause that sort of was happening just a few months after my debut. Hang on. Let me think about this. My timelines are a little bit off. Okay. I had finished writing my debut and finished the edits, but it hadn't come out yet. So I was actually writing this couple more break before my book came out, mm-hmm. um, like during all this mess. <laughs> and I ended up turning in a book that was, I was like, well, I can't push it back. I was afraid to talk to my editor for help. I was like, I, I'm supposed to just do it. That's my job. Um, spoiler, talk to your editors. <laughs> like <laughs> they're there to help you actually. And everybody says that and I would hear it and I would be like, yeah, but like, I'm supposed to at least get this much done on my own first, right? Like I'm supposed to at least get the first draft done. Um, so I wrote three first drafts because every single one was completely different because they were all bad. And I turned in the third one, which I wrote mostly like right as this like 60 hour work week thing was kind of winding down mm. and turned it in. And my editor got back to me and she was very kindly, but was like, none of this works. <laughs> Not <laughs> none of it. Oh. And I thought like, I, get, I mean, and I knew she was right. I turned it in. <laughs> It was very much like I was angry. So the book was very angry in a way that didn't make sense for the story. I literally had my main character basically just murder everybody at the end. I was like, we're done. This book is (laughs) done with it. And she was like, maybe not. Maybe we pull back. I was like, okay. Um, So I had to write it from scratch again for the fourth time. Mm -hmm. Um, Meanwhile, I'm gearing up for my debut to come out. Mm -hmm. I'm watching, you know, seeing fellow debuts who have bigger marketing pushes. And I just was doing all of this compare and despair. And no matter what I could see out there, I always made it mean that I was wrong and that my book was going to fail and that my publisher didn't believe in me. Even though, even though there was no, when I think back about it now, I'm like, I totally like used any evidence I could find to fit that story, Mm. which I think is, what we do is because we are so creative as writers, like it's both our, like our gift and our curse because we can spin any story anyway. And it's very easy to spin it where you're always coming out behind. Damn, that's hitting hard right now. I'm not going to lie because that's where I'm at right now. I'm, you know, heading into my debut year, but I'm currently working on a second book. Mm-hmm. And it's a total different world. It's not a sequel or a prequel. It's just a new thing. And and it was hard to get there. It was hard to come up with ideas and to finish it. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, I had Melanie to kind of like talk shit to me. And that really <laughs> was fun for me, And which I guess sounds weird, but it really worked. And, um, but now that like I'm here and, and I'm seeing others starting to get, you're seeing their covers and all these things. And it it is a weird, weird ass place of, and Melanie keeps reminding me this too, is like where I turned Sinner's Isle in, it had just been through Pitch Wars. It had been through multiple edits. And so that book was good to go, but this new book, I'm mm-hmm. going to turn it in sloppy or, you know, I'm going to try my best, but it can't be not sloppy. It's not. Thank you. Thank you. It, but you know, it, it won't ever be where Sinner's Isle was, at least in my own brain, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I have to be okay with that and like live through the drama that my own head is creating. And so you're, mm-hmm. it's, it is hitting because my brain is spinning. She is yeah. telling me things. Um, she's making up, a lot of tall tales and Mm -hmm. (laughs) it is well and that's like it's funny because the brain is actually designed to find proof for whatever you tell it to do so if you ask yourself like why am i a lazy you know garbage pile it'll go and give you the list (laughs) is what it's like a computer you put in something in google and it spits out the answers Mm -hmm. so instead if you're like okay where like what are all the good things i did this day this week whatever it'll also give you a list so you gotta be careful of what you put into the brain google because it'll just give you whatever you ask for good or bad it doesn't care yeah you just gave me chills because i've said this (laughs) quote on the podcast before but it's 
it's re-mentionable. One of my favorite quotes that kind of changed my life is a Maori, New Zealand Maori quote that's mm -hmm. uh, turn your face towards the sun and the shadows fall behind you. And Ooh. before I read that, I had been living like searching for the dark without realizing it. Mm -hmm. And somehow hearing that one quote when I was like in my 20s, I was like, it can't be that simple. And then I remember, though, trying to kind of like walk towards the positive people, walk towards the positive thoughts and being surprised when my mood would change. Mm -hmm. And it's so powerful to just have these conversations because we have a lot more power than we realize to like shift that even just like and it's not all the time sometimes you need an emo day but like even I know like getting up and dancing instead of just like you know have your cry on the couch <laughs> but then I'll get up and dance to a BTS song you know and it can just shift your mood and it can change your life that kind of thinking I think yeah and part of like you said like it's it is that simple but it's also not easy yes mm. And part of it is sometimes when we learn that, we're like, oh, I can always just think happier thoughts and then I'll be happy. But no, mm -hmm. because you don't want to be happy all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've talked about it online a few times, but my, so he raised a foster son for 14 months and then he was returned to his bio mom. And that sort of two months as we knew he was going to be leaving and then the six weeks that he was gone and now he's back, which lovely to have him back but during that time that like three months was like the biggest season of grief in my entire life mm. like huge waves of just like crying so hard I can't breathe kind of grief mm. and I'm not gonna slap a happy thought on that mm. you know so like being able to sit there and just like especially like with my spouse or with like my parents and just like um, be able to just be with myself and give myself sort of the same care I would I would give like him if he was that upset like that is also part of it you can't just yeah plaster rainbows on things because like the human life is always going to be a mixture of emotions like my this has been the year <laughs> like <laughs> we had the foster care stuff um and was just challenging you know he was our first long-term foster first time being a mom and then didn't have daycare at all for like eight months and that's a whole thing and then my spouse developed a seizure disorder like everything that could be scary was scary this year and yet because I have you know I became a coach and now I'm a master coach I have all these tools now for how to like soothe my nervous system and evaluate what's happening in my brain and hold really deep compassion like it's been the hardest year, but also in some ways, like the most powerful best year too. Like I have the tools to actually be me and have my back through all of that stuff. And like finishing a book and I just got edits on my 24 release. <laughs> it's like, here I am like 10 books in, it'll be my fourth published, but like 10 that I've written and it's going to be a big revision. <laughs> and <laughs> but still being like, I'm so proud of what I did this year with all of the stuff going on. And I'm like really looking forward to like diving in and knowing that like, I've got it and it's not, but I also did have to have like the, when the first night that I got it, I was like, Oh, like, Oh, I kind of knew that was wrong. And then I was like, Oh, I didn't had no idea that that was going to come across in the book. So I still had like the feelings and like wrote a whole journal entry about how like everything's terrible and is never going to get done. And just like, I had that like thing, went to bed and then I was fine the next day. Cause I actually was like with myself and with the feelings. Mm, damn. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I had to think about that. Like I had to sit with this for a second of like yeah. letting yourself grieve over things and being okay to sit in that, like that nastiness, that wretchedness that you don't want to feel that you'd mm -hmm. rather just like slap rainbows on, uh, you know, unicorns on. You'd rather just like not think about it, but sitting in that mess, in that heartbreak is so like healing because you get this chance of just like letting yourself think about things and experience things and come out of it, you know, and yeah. whew, you got me on that one. 
it's yeah, because otherwise it just like stays trapped. Like if you yeah. if you kind of just like, which I always tease my spouse because I'm the coach in the house, and my spouse is just like shove it down. I'm not gonna feel it. <laughs> I'm like that's not gonna be healthy. Well, you're gonna have to deal with that later, because uh, it always comes back if you if you don't process it, it'll pop up eventually. Yeah, you're you're gonna turn into Elsa, you know, conceal, <laughs> don't feel. You gotta mm-hmm. let. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be <laughs> on there. I apologize. I I love that you went there it was a very vivid visual (laughs) because I think we all cried in that scene because it's it's a powerful scene because everyone's been there bottling up Mm -hmm. stuff and then letting it go (laughs) 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 yeah but the balance is definitely so important like you said and and being able to sit with those uncomfortable feelings it's something that I've definitely started to realize is so important as I get older and because yeah like we are kind of taught just grin and bear and carry on you know which is a lot of what leads to burnout like I know for me I suffered a massive nervous breakdown about six years ago but before that happened I had multiple burnouts that Mm -hmm. I ignored and I was too young too inexperienced I had no idea I was just like suffering on the inside, but I was like, no, but everyone else is fine. I should be fine too. Just keep going, just Mm. keep going. And humans, we have this like incredible ability to function under severe dysfunction in our bodies, you know? And Mm -hmm. a lot of times people, the happiest, most outgoing ones are often dealing with the most. And it, And that's because strength can coexist with those things. It seems to be something, I was just chatting with someone about this in DMs, like it seems to be a concept that some people struggle to understand that you can exist with both great power and great presence, but also have all this shit going on in your body that needs to be dealt with. And if you don't have the information, which is why we like to talk about it so openly, have these conversations, bring awareness about it. I didn't even know I had anxiety and panic disorder until many years later, until a couple of years after my nervous breakdown. And I was like, just having to try and manage that all somehow in myself and feeling like a crazy person. (laughs) And well, because it it feels normal if it's been that way, like your whole life. Like I, I was, I got diagnosed with anxiety in 2020. And once I was diagnosed and like on meds and I was like, I probably had anxiety since I was like six, but I I look back at my life and I was like, oh my goodness. But to me, I just thought that was just like normal worrying that everybody did. Turns out, no, certainly not. (laughs) Exactly. So if this is striking a chord with you, my dear, dear listeners, and I always think this just in case there's someone listening going, my God, my body feels like it's on fire on the inside. And I some days feel like I'm dying listen, there's help. There is help. You don't have to suffer through that. And whatever journey you take to healing, there's so many options now available. Just reach out because you don't have to live with that level of uh, complete toxic burning inside of you nonstop all the time. (laughs) Just just claim up for anyone listening. I always think of young, early 20s Mel her body was on fire and she just had no clue. She had no clue. She was like, I'll pray about it because that's what the old people told her to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And that that's a whole other kettle of damaging fish that we won't go into right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll be another episode or five. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole thing. Uh, but, like, was book two kind of the catalyst of your journey to exploring burnout and and? ways of dealing with it so I think book two is really what kind of in a lot of ways like burnt me out and then I was starting to learn a little bit about coaching but it wasn't ever like filtered through like a a publishing lens it was always filtered through like a feminist lens or this or that and it's again we're crafty little storytellers so I was like but it's different in publishing publishing's different it's different when you're a creative uh, so it wasn't until, honestly, it was probably 2020 that kind of did me in because that was, I finished The Coldest Touch, which I don't think that burnt me out because the, like, that was sort of my escape because I wrote that, like, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Like, that was, I was finishing the first draft right around, I don't know, I think May. Mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of, like, 
it was just a lot of I mean part of it was my anxiety was like spiking to the point so about when I got diagnosed and I would spend most of the day watching the news panicking and then scrolling like Twitter all night and then I'd be like 11 p.m and I'm like crap I didn't write so then I would write for a few hours and, and it just was like a mess <laughs> and then thankfully it was hard for everybody in publishing so I didn't get an edit letter for five months hmm. so I had five months where I just couldn't create couldn't do anything was just really shut down and then as we kind of tipped into 2021 and I got my edit letter I was like okay I have to <laughs> I have to figure something out because this isn't working. And that's when I really started um, listening to more podcasts about coaching and getting more into understanding how your mindset, you know, the thoughts affect your feelings, which affect the actions that you take. And, you know, how one of my podcast episodes, and it's a favorite one I come back to a lot is that like, we try to shame ourselves into action a lot. And it is like, that is one of the big keys of burning out. Like if you're trying to finish your book from the shame of like, if you don't finish this, you're going to fail. You're a loser. Like, you know, I should be better. Like all of those kinds of things, like that's going to lead you in a bad place. Uh, but so sort of that process and realizing that being published is really kind of magical. Hmm. Like, like Angela, you're about to have this, like your book is, and it's got like chills thinking about it. Like your book is about to go into the world and touch lives of humans that you may never, ever, ever meet. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. And it's so easy to forget that. Mm -hmm. And as I started to notice where I was spending way more time looking at my advanced size and the marketing and what was happening for friends and being excited for them, being jealous for me. And like, I lost sight of like, if I were to go back and like complain this way to the me who started writing, I'd be like, what are you doing? We made it. What are you talking? We made it. Like we're published. Like, and you're complaining what is happening. And so I started to really kind of sink more into like how cool it is to be able to, especially like as like a queer person, put out books at center, you know, queer girls in particular. And like they're in languages that I don't speak they're like and it's like it's really an incredible thing when you can kind of pull back from the day-to-day -day and think about it and the more I spent time there like the more fun writing got to be again mm. and sort of that shift was like and as I was able to enjoy what I was doing and I was like hey I can push a deadline and the world's not gonna end yeah. and like and that's when I was like other authors need this because my life was changing so much. I was like, other authors need this. If we're going to, you know, especially there's been a lot of talk about trying to shift the industry and make it more equitable. We cannot do that if we're burnt out. Hmm. So if we, if I can sort of be part of that change to help the authors create more sustainably and enjoy what they're doing and be like, feel like they have the power to make decisions in their career like that's when we'll have the energy to actually shift the industry. Wow. I I was getting teary-eyed <laughs> just listening to you, honestly, because like, it's true. Five years ago or whenever the hell I started writing, if, if I would <laughs> hear me complaining about just stupid shit of like, oh, my edit letter, oh, poor me, you know, I'd be like, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, it's like, we forget the magic of we're mm -hmm. working. We've been working so hard for something and it is magic. It really truly is magic. And what you said, somebody's going to be reading my book and for you, like in languages that you don't even speak, that is so fucking amazing and special. Mm -hmm. And I've just got chills again because it's, we forget. And, mm -hmm. and you're right. Pushing back a deadline, the world will not blow up, you know, like, <laughs> we'll be okay and um that's such a beautiful thing to be reminded yeah and the flip side of that is that being published also doesn't make your life perfect mm -hmm. you're still gonna have grief you're still gonna feel frustrated you're still gonna feel disappointed and you can hold both mm. and it's important to remember that like 
when I get, um, like, so for example, when I had, uh, I ended up last like October ish, I told, or I had my agent (laughs) tell my editor, I was like, listen, the book that I'm working on for you, it needs to be deleted and started over. Is that cool? And I had, and this is again, where I was like, oh, authors need this because when I made that decision, it was a decision I made in about a day. Cause I could, I just got to a point where I was like, this book isn't working. Mm. It's really best for my readers if I scrap it and start over. And I made that decision really quickly. I told my agent and then I just got to work. And then it took me another whole year to write it between all the other stuff. And it would have been so easy to be down on myself about it, to freak out about, I'm going to have two and a half years between book three and book four. Mm. And that's one of those things where people are like, you have to publish every year or your whole career is going to explode. No, it's fine. (laughs) Like I have this belief that my readers love what I do and they will wait for me. Yeah. And that, yeah. And that's something I had to practice and learn. Like I chose to believe that. And now I got to a place where like, that just feels real to me. Didn't when I was a debut, if I told, if I told 2019 me like, Hey, you're going to have a book out in 21 and then nothing else until 24, I would have lost my mind, <laughs> lost my mind. But now it's like, it's what happened and it's going to be fine. Cause there's going to be a whole new crop of teens and the readers who, you know, had a couple of years between, they're going to be like, Oh, finally, that's going to be great. Exactly. The people who resonated with it, they never, you never forget those good books anyway. I mean, how long has it been before? I mean, Lainey Taylor's the first person that jumped into mind because I always looked out for her books when she was releasing them. And I always will, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like once you find them and you love their voice, it doesn't just disappear just because nothing. And yeah, like realistically writing a book, it's not like it's not like you physically can do it faster or push it through the process faster and trying to is like a surefire way for burnout. (laughs) But I just think these conversations are so incredible and go so yeah, just thank you for sharing all of this because I feel like the more we have these conversations, the more it's undoing that toxic burnout culture that Mm. is like basically in my opinion prevalent everywhere like every industry is just like more more what can you give more and and we celebrate that we reward it we reward the people who are burning themselves out to a crisp with promotions and whatever because they're outputting the most work and then when they fall off and disappear because they burnt out someone else replaces them and they get a promotion and whatever and we're humans we're not just like cogs in a machine that can go endlessly and and it's like yeah I just I just love these conversations can you tell us a little bit more about the coaching program that you do yeah yeah Yeah. so I work uh with authors and so I kind of define authors as anybody with an agent on um a lot of folks already are focusing on like there's so much about like how to query and how to you know show don't tell like there's a lot of that stuff And then once you kind of cross to, you have an agent and you're on sub and then you sell a book, it sort of all disappears and you have no support. So I was like, we're going to fill this gap. So I work with authors and really a lot of what we do, it's, so it's a six month one-on-one. So you coach with me every week, privately one-on-one. And then we really figure out like, what is it you want your career to be in terms of like, how do you want to feel as a writer? Like, how do you want to show up in your life? And then we work on creating that. And a lot of that is like unlearning the hustle culture, unlearning all of the, which a lot of this ties back to like what we were taught by the patriarchy of like your worth is tied to how much you get done Mm. or, you know, how thin you are, how pretty you are, how much money you have, like all of like all of the different things, they all kind of come together. And so it's learning that, you know, rest is actually not a luxury. Like that is just, that needs to be part of your career. Mm -hmm. And figuring out like, how do you become somebody who can either meet your deadline that's tight in a way that doesn't burn you out or decide to push it and have your own back no matter what the publisher says. So that's sort of, it's very custom tailored. It's very, um, I don't know, to me, it's just like, it's like the most personalized way to really become who you want to be in like the fastest way possible. And I also have a couple of 
um, thing. So if folks are wanting to like, I don't know when this comes out. <laughs> I don't know like how quickly it goes up, but if it's before this, um, on the 20th, I am hosting a uh, workshop for authors. It's called your author career confidence. It's going to be 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so it's free to, and I will give you all the link if you want to include it with things. Um, so I'm going to be teaching for an hour on all of this stuff. It's really how do you pick that one sentence that grounds you in kind of who you want to be as a writer? So for example, like my thought that my readers love what I do and they're willing to wait. Like that's a sentence that I can always come back to when I'm making decisions. So I'm going to teach them all about that. And then, um, what's another thing I have? Oh, and then I also, <laughs> I'm like, what do I have? I have so many things. Well, I have my podcast. People can check me out on the author burnout cure. Um, and I've got almost a year's worth of stuff out. So people can learn all the different things. And then the last thing I have is, what would I call it? Oh, it's, uh, Find creative flow, even when there's a deadline breathing down your neck. So it's a free PDF on my website. So folks can, it really kind of helps you shift out of the sort of pressury thoughts into like, why was this idea the thing you wanted to write and reconnecting to like the story and the love of the writing rather than the, like, if I don't hit the deadline, the world's going to explode. Mm. I have lots of little goodies. Yeah, you do. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm already going to just be re-listening to this episode over and over again, or probably just listening to your podcast. <laughs> so I don't have to hear my voice. I'm just going to listen to your voice. Um, I mean, it's what I really, really appreciate about you, to be honest, is like, not only are you doing the work writing wise, I mean, you are putting out amazing stories, queer stories that mm -hmm. so many people need to read, but you're also doing the work in the sense of helping your community. And, mm -hmm. and I really, really appreciate that. I just want to thank you because mm -hmm. we need this, especially in the world we live in, in this burnout world, we need to like switch things around and, and focus on what was important, why we started this yeah. in the first yeah. place. And so, so thank you for that. Honestly, yeah. it's yeah. you're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> And you gave me chills when you said that you've got your own back and that's mm. like, that's what it comes down to in the end, because once you find that grounded place of, of knowing your self-worth and knowing who you are and what you are at your core, those other decisions to take care of yourself should come naturally. Yeah. It's just that. It was a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. I always, I always, I always am upfront about the fact that it's really easy for me to like slip back into, let me do a little work on the weekends, a little work here. And then I'm, I have to remind myself of like, no, yes, true. we don't have to fill all of our rest time with like helpful reading. So it's a constant like, rem like oh yeah. And remembering and sort of like getting back into the flow of like what I want to be doing versus what all of the constant messaging is trying to convince me I should do. That's true. It is a constant battle to remind people are always like, oh, that's such a good idea. And I'm like, it's I only said it because I'm reminding myself every day, having that <laughs> argument in my brain saying, you're not lazy for sitting out in the sun for half an hour today because mm -hmm. that's nourishing and that is necessary. And and it's like you said, that's not like uh it's not a luxury, it's a need to switch mm -hmm. off. It's a need to get some sun, you know, but yeah. Woo! Um, this conversation has got me fired up and Woo! what a way to kind of bring in the Christmas and the new year for our last episode. And I just, yeah, I'm in awe. So thank you so much for coming on thank and you. sharing your authenticity and all your nuggets that I just know everyone's crying out for it you know like the the industry every industry is so clotted with the other type of burnout culture but everybody is so desperate for this this authenticity this ability to be vulnerable and be like I'm exhausted I need to take the week to lay in my pajamas and binge Netflix whatever it is like mm -hmm. yeah so thank you for sharing all of that and yeah we will definitely put those links up everywhere so our listeners can track you down and hear more of your glorious words. So, yeah, I see our time has evaporated. I know, like a minute. <laughs> it's wild. 
But again, thank you just for joining us and for blessing us with <laughs> this encouragement. I didn't know I needed it so bad, but I needed this. Yeah. Thank you. This was, it was, it's always, I mean, I get to get up on my soapbox. So it's fun for me too. <laughs> love I can't wait. I'm going to binge on your podcast. I'm not even kidding. I can't wait. To listen to it. I just did, um, I released uh, this week. I did a love letter to debut authors. So you can start there. Okay, I will. <laughs> that sounds perfection. So listeners, you heard it here. Go listen to the love letter for debut authors. Go listen to how we can get rid of this burnout culture. And yeah, thank you so much. It's going to cut us off any second, but we loved having you on. We'll have to have you on again. Yes, and totally. Yeah. Always welcome back. So thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day slash night. Yeah. <laughs> all these time zones, you know, know. we're just all over the place. <laughs>